My name's Chris, and I repair my own audio equipment, and I also show you how to repair yours. So let's get started. If you had several hundred millivolts of DC voltage on your speaker outputs, would you say that your piece of equipment's working properly? A lot of people do, because they don't even know that they have a problem. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I repaired and restored a Pioneer SA9900 and I was able to capture some data that I think is interesting and may show you guys why even if you think that your equipment's working correctly, a lot of times it isn't. I'll show you how you can use your ears along with an inexpensive multimeter to find this issue. The Pioneer SA9900 was produced in the middle 1970s, typical, well-built, Japanese audio product from the middle 70s. Any of you guys that are into it, you know what I mean. Doesn't matter if it's a Marantz, a Sansui, you name the brand in the middle 70s, they were all quality. But just because they were engineered and manufactured well, doesn't mean they last forever. This integrated amplifier is approaching 50 years old. Almost all vintage audio equipment that's 50 years old has some issues, whether you realize it or not. For many people, they think if their 50-year-old piece of vintage audio equipment powers up and they've got a left channel and they've got a right channel and they can hear sound that's operating properly. That's not always the case and most of the time, as I just said, 50 years old, that's hardly ever the case. It seems that a lot of folks think you only can be in two states, either it's working or it's not. And that's far from the case. Most of the units I work on are somewhere in between. This SA9900 is a good example of that in between. Let me show you what I mean. I thought showing you this on a graph was the best way to go. This graph has a horizontal and it has a vertical category. The vertical is the DC volts and the horizontal is the timeline. And so this was captured in real time. And once this starts running, you're gonna see this moving over a period of time. You're gonna see the voltage going up and down. And this was measured at the speaker outputs of this SA9900. I just powered up the 9900 and it hasn't come out of protection yet. So we're just kind of reading random garbage here at the speaker outputs. Now, right there, it powered up. And let me stop it here for a minute. And you can see that we had a spike up to just under 80 millivolts. And that's normal. That's not an abnormal thing to see because you can see right immediately it started to fall back down. So there's nothing wrong with that there. So let's keep moving on here. And it's just going along and it's fallen down to about, oh, I don't know, 13 millivolts, 15 millivolts of DC at the outputs, that's good. And now look though, look at that spike. Let's stop it again for a minute. That spike down of about negative 85 millivolts is not normal. And this is the kind of problem I say that people don't even know that they have. And these are the type of things that maybe started occurring five years ago, 10, 20 years ago, and eventually, their piece of equipment doesn't work anymore, and now they think it's broke, where they didn't realize it had been broke for years. And you kind of think, well, why didn't the protection circuit kick in here? What's going on? The protection circuit in this unit doesn't kick on until about 750 millivolts, about three quarters of a volt. So as far as the amp's concerned, he's perfectly happy. Now, of course, your music's not gonna be sounding as clear and as crisp as it can, and you're suddenly gonna be listening to it and you're gonna say, well, boy, this amp doesn't sound all that good to me. Or you've been listening to it like this for so long, you think it sounds great. So let's keep going here. And again, it pops back about normal. There we have another little spike up, and it's just going along here, going along here. And this is something that is random. I could do this again, and you're gonna get a different result. You don't get the same result every time. And take a look again. Now look at the spikes. Holy smokes, now we got some more coming. And this time went to, what, 130, 133 millivolts 
on the positive side and down around in minus 50 or so on the negative side, that affects the way this amp sounds. You may not know it though. You don't know it. And there's another spike, a big one down 152 and I don't know, up 100 or so. But those are the type of things that affect the sound quality. You don't know anything's wrong. The amp's just sitting there playing along, but it does affect the way it sounds. All these DC voltage glitches happened in a minute and a half, not an hour and a half, not a day and a half. When you've got DC voltage riding on your speaker outputs like this, it's not a good thing. Even though possibly this amplifier will do this for the next 50 years and you'll never have any issues with it other than poor sound quality. But there's a good chance at some point the amp's going to end up going into protection mode because the failure is going to be bad enough. And you just got to hope when that happens, it doesn't take out your vintage speakers along with it. What you just saw was another normal power up, spiked up to about 80 millivolts, and then it just fell back down here to 10, 15 millivolts. And it's just going along perfectly happy. I'm going to go ahead a little bit in this one. The last one, everything happened right up early. But this one, as you can see, everything looks fine. It looks perfect. We haven't gotten any extra spikes. And I'll let it run here a minute and just show you what happens. Boy, that looks good. If you've got an amplifier doing what this one's doing, you'd say it is working great. Because it is. If it would just sit there at that 10 millivolt level, everything's wonderful. But I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead a little bit here. And I don't have to jump ahead too far. I've only got to jump ahead to around the four minute mark or a little bit better to show you what can happen. So I've jumped ahead here to about the four minute mark, a little bit over. And you can see, first four minutes of this being powered up, everything's one. Whoops, what was that? We got our first spike, right? Over 160 millivolts, both positive and negative. That's bad, right? Now, almost 600 and almost minus 900 millivolts. Now that's gonna put this amplifier into protection. That relay is gonna click and it's gonna disconnect your speakers because that's too much. Now you're over three volts positive, three volts, not millivolts, and minus two volts. This is bad news. You don't want to have your speakers hooked up now, even though the amplifier is going to do its best to protect your speakers. This is not something you want to have happening. Now what will happen as that DC offset comes down under that three quarters of a volt after four seconds or so, this amplifier is going to reconnect itself to your speakers. And guess what? We're gonna go through the same thing again. Let's try another two or three volts. Let's just see what happens. And then it's gonna disconnect. And then it's gonna sit there that four seconds, at about four seconds or so, it times out. And then it's gonna connect back to your speakers again. Do you want this happening? Nobody with any sense does, or nobody that's got any pair of speakers they care at all about does. Because this type of voltage will damage your speakers. There's no doubt about it. A dangerous aspect of this is once this amplifier gets under about that three quarters of a volt, 750 millivolts, it resets again, as long as it's been four seconds. And then you go through the same thing again. So as long as this amplifier's DC offset gets under that 750 millivolts, so four seconds go by, click, it connects you right back to your speakers again. And basically it's good luck. Hopefully it does its job and disconnects before it does some damage. I wanted to show you this graph because the first graph, this is what this type of a problem can turn into. Doesn't mean it's going to. The first graph I showed you, when the amplifier only got a couple hundred millivolts, both positive and negative, the amp played and everything was fine. And that will do no damage to your speakers. As I said, the sound quality is not gonna be as good as it could be, but there's gonna be no damage. But what that problem can turn into is what you see here where you see five, six volts being put out to your speakers. 
Now that's going to be damaging. And my point is, this is where people think their equipment's broke, is the chart I'm showing you right here. Because if you're with your amplifier and you hear it going click, click, and it's not playing, you say it's broke. Where in reality, it has probably been broke years before it got to this point. So I hope you found this informative and it gives you something to think about with your vintage audio equipment. And again, this was a Pioneer SA9900 and it's nothing against Pioneer or the 9900. Matter of fact, I love Pioneer products. As you guys know, they've seen my videos and the 9900 is a great amp. It doesn't matter the brand. It can be Macintosh. It can be an old Conrad Johnson or an old Mark Levinson. If you've got an old piece of audio equipment and hasn't been on a test bed, bench in years there's a better than even chance that it doesn't sound as good as it could or that you're going to have reliability issues down the road i'll show you what it took to repair this pioneer sa 9900 in my upcoming video but right now i want to just show you how you guys at home can check your amplifiers and your receivers to see if you have an issue similar to this because this is not a problem, as I indicated. This is a Pioneer problem. It's a Marantz problem. It's a Sansui problem. It's any piece of equipment that was built in the 70s and into the 80s potentially have the same issue. You don't have to have a fancy meter. You don't have to have fancy software. With just an inexpensive multimeter, you can check out your receiver or amplifier and see if you have a similar issue. And maybe this is why you don't think your piece of equipment is sounding all that great. And even if you think that your receiver or amplifier does sound great, it's just good to check the DC offset at the speaker outputs. It's a lot like getting your blood pressure checked. It's not something that gives you a clear bill of health if your blood pressure is good, but it's a good base indicator. The same way with DC offset is to an amplifier or a receiver. Ideally, you want to have zero millivolts DC at your speaker outputs. Many of you guys know that and I just feel anything under 50 millivolts you're okay it, it's not worth messing with if you want to tinker with something that's got 50 millivolts go ahead now if you get up in the 100 millivolt range that's where I think a lot of people who talk about how their particular piece of equipment may not sound as good as another piece of equipment they have from the same era this is the reason why, because if you have a DC offset that's 100 millivolts or more, you are not listening to that piece of equipment like it was engineered to be listened to. It will make a huge difference if you get the DC offset at least under 50 millivolts and ideally to zero if you can. Now I'll show you with an inexpensive multimeter what this sounds like and looks like. Okay, I just powered up the 9900. It's just come out of protection. You may have heard the speaker relay. Now listen. Hear that static? And take a look at the DC offset as it's going all over the place. So now what I'm going to do, there is a preamp power amp separation switch on this 9900 like there is on a lot of integrated amps and it's in normal I'm gonna move it to separated let's see what it does I just clicked it and look at that DC offset go right down to about five millivolts four and a half and it's just sitting right there not moving so that's another troubleshooting technique to be able to see if it's the power amp section or the preamp section. I just switched it back to where I connected the preamp and the power amp. The static is back and now the DC offset is also going all over the place. So just take your digital multimeter and hook it up to the speaker outputs of your receiver or amplifier and just see what you've got. 
turn on the amplifier, let it warm up for 15, 20 minutes anyway, and just take a look and see what your DC offset is. If it's over 100 millivolts, that's something for you to look into. And I'm not trying to say that everybody's issue with their sound quality is DC offset issues, but it's a very common issue, and it's something that's easily checked by somebody who just has an inexpensive digital multimeter. It's taken decades for this SA9900 to get in this condition, to where the DC offset is all over the place, and you can actually audibly hear the static. What had happened up to this point was it was gradual. It may have been 10 years ago, it may have been 20, it may have been 30 when this started, and you barely heard it. And so you guys at home, you can take your multimeter, take a look at your outputs, and just listen to your speakers. Just sit there near them and listen and see if you hear any type of crackling, any type of noise like you heard in this video. And you may, you may not, because as I indicated, so many of these units have been broke for years and people just don't know it until it gets so bad the amplifier either goes into protection mode or you've got so much static you can't help but hear it in the background. I also want to say that I cranked up the amplitude of the static so it was easier to hear in the video. It wasn't nearly that loud. You had to get much closer to the speakers to hear it. It was audible, but it made it sound in the video like how could you miss it? And you could still miss it if you weren't up near your speakers. So as I indicated, just go up near your speakers and see if you hear anything other than maybe a little bit of hiss that you always hear. If you hear anything similar to what I showed in this video. When I post my repair and restoration video of this Pioneer SA9900, I'll go into detail of what fixed my issue. I hope this video showed you that just because your vintage audio equipment appears to be working, it doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that it's working correctly. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up down below. And for my present subscribers, as always, thank you so much for watching. For you guys who aren't subscribers, I would appreciate it if you'd go ahead and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. Y'all have a good day.